Yeah, obviously not the ideal start for the team, but I think one thing that makes us really good is our ability to bounce back. We obviously start series quite solely and build it up from there. And who knows, it's all to play for in this last test match. Uh, hopefully we can salvage the draw, which is as good as winning in a subcontinent. It's really, really tough conditions that we're not exposed to, but we're obviously looking forward to the challenge that lies ahead. Unfortunately, we missed the day of practice today due to the weather, but for the next two days before the, the second test, we're going to be working as hard and obviously trying to correct our errors, but build on the positives from the previous match. Obviously, your length is a little bit fuller than what you're exposed to back home because of the nature of the wickets being a little bit slower. Uh, for me, I just try and get the shape on my ball because then it tells me an indication of how I'm bowling and how my rhythm is feeling. And I think I got that uh, back, to my, back to my best in the, in the second innings. Uh, the first innings, my ball was quite flattish. I didn't try bowl it like that. It just came out the way. But like I said, I rectified it. Every morning I was here bowling early to try and get those overs under the belt to sort of get the feel back in my hand. Firstly, I never thought I'd be playing test cricket. But uh, yeah, it's gone by really quickly. I can remember on the 3rd of no uh, November 2016, I debuted in Perth. And I never look back since. It's something that I really want to be a part of. I love being here and sort of trying to contribute to the team. And hopefully I can aid the team into becoming the number one test team in the world one day. Um, it's a place every youngster dreams of coming. And trust me, once you get a taste of being here, you, you never want to leave this team. Top edge. Gets to it. Sri Lanka lose another. And it's Kusal Mendes. Third wicket for Keshav Maharaj. Both these two right down as have played that sweep shot a few times in this innings and played it well, but not this time. Wicket number three for Keshav Maharaj, so he'll be enjoying this challenge. South Africa needed this. This partnership was just starting to take some shape. In the end, Kakhisa Rabada got there comfortably, makes no mistake. Wicket number three for Keshav Maharaj. Gone! Gone! There's another! A fourth for Keshav Maharaj. Angela Matthews had to play at this. Pitch on off. It's the shoulder of the bat, so a very good delivery. Good catch low down by Faf Duplessis as well. Disappointment for Angela Matthews. He goes for 10. Sri Lanka now 169 for four. She out to catch it. There's another five wicket haul for. Keshav Maharaj it was way across the off stump to make a difference. Bit of glove because the ball holds a little bit on the surface. And fifth five wicket haul for Keshav Maharaj. Niroshan Dikwell is on the way back. He's made five. Sri Lanka 238 for six. Asking the question, just beating that forward defense. Yeah, we just saw the graphic of the variation, and this is the one that slid on. Is it going to hit the leg stump or slide in on? It doesn't look like bat. I'll go go to Alter Edge to confirm that. Yeah, clearly missed the bat. Clearly missed the bat. We'll go to ball tracking when ready. Waiting for ball tracking, Nigel. Here it is. Pitching in line, impact in line. It's hitting the wickets. Go back to Nigel on ground. Get your reverse decision. That's out. Thank you. The silver goes for a well played 60. 247 for seven. Gets another. Straight to the fielder. You could have hit it anywhere. And that's the fourth wicket falling to the sweep shot. Seven for Keshav Maharaj. What a day he's having. This is a bonus wicket for him. It was down the leg side, it was full. Just turned enough. Holding up a bit. Dilron Pereira. He's gone for 17, it's 8 for 264. Yeah. Got him. Brilliant. Markram plucks that out of thin air. He's a great fielder, Aiden Markram. He's got an excellent pair of hands. This was a sensational catch, diving to his left. Lakmal without scoring, nine down, 264. Yeah, really, really chuffed. I think it's nice to get overs under your belt. Uh, I didn't expect so many overs in the subcontinent, but really happy with the way that things goes and obviously happy with the day of how the boys went about their business here today. Opportunity tomorrow, you come out, you'd probably get the first over, chance to get nine for. 
Yeah, I haven't thought that far ahead right now. I just want to have a nice massive meal <laughs> and then get some feet up. But yeah, I'd love to take the new ball. Oh, well, the, the first ball tomorrow morning and who knows what happens from there. Yeah, 32 overs, you could have done with a, a spin to an out there. Yeah, unfortunately, but uh, I don't get involved in team selection. I'm just here to bowl overs and uh, luckily I did manage to bowl mine. Comparison of the two surfaces that you played on so far, the difference of that of Gore compared to here in, in Colombo? I think it's a little bit quicker here in Colombo. Uh, Gore was a lot slower and, and uh, I just felt like there was a bit something, a bit of something there in terms of a bit of bounce. We saw that with the, with the short ball being utilised. Sometimes people don't appreciate spinners do actually get tired as well. After 32 overs, is it the body that gets sore? Is it the fingers? Uh, no, I think as much as you can tell yourself you're not tired, the body does get a bit sore, but then Faf obviously saw that I was tiring out a bit and gave me a few overs break and then I came back. Uh, I did ask for the ball afterwards and told him, Faf, I'm ready now. <laughs> so, yeah, the body does get a bit sore, but the fingers keep going. OK, an assessment, having lost the toss, being put into the field, how would you assess that from a South African perspective today? Yeah, obviously it's unfortunate that we lost the toss, but I think it's uh, we, we managed to control the rate pretty decently well on a subcontinent wicket. It, uh, it's important that we get the first wicket early tomorrow morning and hopefully our batters can set it up from there. Do you think there's going to be some more turn on the surface as the match goes on? I think as it goes on, it might, it might turn a little bit more, but who knows, maybe it might rain overnight and bind the wicket. As, it is, as, it, as I said before, it's still a bit hard, so we'll only know tomorrow what, with what the weather has in hold. OK, well, brilliant performance from yourself. Well done. All the best tomorrow. See if you can get that number done. <laughs> Thanks, Polly. Yes! He's got him. He's got him. That's it. Finally. South Africa have the final one. We're going upstairs to check and make sure. Yeah. Coming back. Yeah, just rock and rolling that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I'll go back to Nigel on ground. Nigel, you can see the original decision about. And it's a ninth wicket for Keshav Maharaj. What a wonderful performance it's been from the young South African spinner. A day that he will remember for the rest of his life. Nine wickets in the test innings. Nine for 129. Brilliant bowling from Maharaj. Yeah, outstanding. Keshav Maharaj. Nine for 129. Second best figures for South Africa in test matches after Hugh Tayfield's nine for 113. Back in 1957. Here he is in Sri Lanka at the SSC on his first tour into the subcontinent and he's reaping great rewards. Fantastic. And he gets the opportunity to keep the ball and to lead his side off. Bowling wise, hard work for the fast bowlers. They went in with three seamers did South Africa. Stain, Rabada and Ngidi just picking up the one wicket between them. That was Kakisa Rabada, the one for 55. Maharaj, there's no doubt. Uh, day he will remember and the pick of the bowlers. Nine for 129. And then the part-time spin of Mark and Elgram tried to pick up a wicket or two. So 338 is what Sri Lanka end up with.